I'm Rene Ritchie, and I'm reacting live to the Apple Silicon event. On deck, the all new MacBook Pro. Sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. Apple is not done. There is also a new 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I think this is Apple trying to show that they can do more than just an iPad, even an iPad Pro style ultra mobile device. And we have Shruti Haldia on, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm so sorry, Shruti. One of the other managers from the Mac marketing team. And the expectation with a Pro is much higher level performance, as good as an iPad Pro is, that still feels like a hyper mobile device. And I think the expectation level for a Pro is even higher. And this again is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, not a 14 inch MacBook Pro, no redesign, very similar. And they're claiming 2.8 times faster performance. We haven't heard yet exactly what the difference is between the M1 in the Air and in the Pro, aside from the bigger, probably the bigger thermals in the device, the bigger power in the device. And they're claiming five times uh, speed increase for the GPU and showing off again, apps like Cinema 4D, Pro apps, which should mean that all this stuff has been ported over, fingers crossed, to Apple Silicon, to the M1. Three times faster, they're saying, than best-selling Windows laptops in its class. Uh, no idea what that means yet. We'll have to wait and see. 8K ProRes, full quality in DaVinci Resolve. They're not talking about Final Cut yet, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, which is impressive. And machine learning is up to 11 times faster, but I don't think the Intel Macs were ever known for their machine learning. And they're claiming it's the world's fastest compact laptop for machine learning. It's got an active cooling system, which again, we've never seen on an Apple Silicon based device. There's just none of that in an iPad Pro at all. There also remains these huge questions around not just Pro apps, but games. I think a lot of people are hoping that the Apple Silicon, that the M1, now that we know it's called the M1, is gonna hearken a new era of gaming, but we haven't seen any, like not any really impressive game demos yet. The games they have shown have tended to be older and not that performant. And especially now that we have Navi, big Navi, Navi 2 from AMD, and we have Ampere, the 3080 and 3090 from NVIDIA, and ray tracing and all of these things. Uh, Apple is really, or we're gonna really have to see what these Macs can do in terms of performance. I imagine it's gonna be like iPad Air Plus in terms of performance, but how is that gonna work with Mac games, especially if some of those games are still emulated, huge question mark. And in terms of battery life, they're saying thanks to the efficiency of everything from the M1 to Big Sur, you're getting 17 hours of web browsing and 20 hours of video playback, which is 10 hours more than the Intel-based MacBook Pro system. And the longest battery life, they're saying the longest battery life ever in a Mac Pro, which I think is probably the expectation we all had here. You never know how they're gonna balance in terms of battery life versus just power consumption, but it sounds like they really are pushing for long battery life here. It still has the studio quality mics, still has the touch bar. And again, talking about the camera ISP, the image signal processor, which again, we're expecting to be the same. That's in the A14 in the current generation of iPhones and the iPad Air. But again, no word on, on the actual glass, the actual uh, megapixel count or quality of that webcam yet. So I'm just, praying for no potatoes. And it's only got two Thunderbolt ports, which again, I still think if you're gonna put the Pro label on the box, you gotta put those four Thunderbolt USB-C 4 ports on the box because one of the best parts about having it, one of the things that made the loss of MagSafe, the Mac version of MagSafe acceptable was the ability to charge on either side. That's just an ultimate inconvenience, but also for people who have to do a lot of Pro work, like having to put a camera and a microphone and a storage array just a, and a display, just a bunch of different things at once. You just always need more of these. Starting price is $12.99, $11.99 for education. So again, Apple's not being aggressive about lowering prices. They're being, I think, aggressive on paying down the silicon and hopefully using that envelope to increase feature sets going forward. So it's not an M1X. It doesn't have any additional cores. Maybe the 60 inch, if and when they announce that, could that be coming up next? If and when they announce that, maybe that'll have an M1X, but right now it just, it sounds like it's the MacBook Air, but with a bigger chassis, bigger, better power, and the ability to run faster than the Air could. So for the MacBook Pro, I'm just not sure yet. I, I'm gonna have to look and see how the M1 and not an M1X performs compared to the current Intel processor. 
And the Intel processors have just not been impressive lately, so the bar is as low as possible. But Apple still has to exceed that bar, especially for people who are a little bit nervous that maybe all of their pro apps aren't gonna be available day one or gonna need emulation and some overhead or gonna need some virtualization and need some overhead. I think with the MacBook Pro at least, Apple has everything to prove here. And that's it, Tim Cook is saying goodbye. Apple November event, Apple Silicon, it's finally here. And I still think, oh, John Hodgman for the win. I'm FEC, is there time for questions? Good, cause I have one, why? What an amazing, what an amazing throwback. Uh, John Hodgman from the famous I'm a Mac, I'm a PC uh, series of commercials from the Switcher series from the Steve Jobs era. And I think Apple was also really, really smart here in a number of ways. First, by keeping the current design, again, it gives them a known target to build towards for these releases, but it also gives them a big design update in the future when those next generation laptop designs, if and when we get things like Face ID, uh, that will be another excuse to you know, get all pumped and excited about the Mac again. It's not just firing everything at once. So it is practical from both an engineering and a marketing standpoint. And also they're specifically targeting the Macs that do not have discrete GPUs right now. The MacBook Air, the uh, Mac Mini, and the Mac, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, they were all using Intel embedded. I think the last generation was Iris Pro or Iris Plus, something like that graphics which is a much, much lower target than the discrete graphics you know, that we're getting, especially now from not just NVIDIA and their Ampere boards, but from uh, AMD and their Navi 2, their big Navi boards. So there's gonna be no, just no comparisons at all between the higher end, especially like the gaming rigs, the streaming rigs, the pro rigs, just anything at that workstation level. And it's really just about the story that Apple, that benefits Apple right now, which is power per watt, performance in an ultra portable, even an ultra portable pro machine and battery life in those ultra portables and ultra portable pro machines. It's a very canny, very smart strategy. Uh, and we just have to see if Apple nails the landing. And yeah, it ain't over folks. I've got a ton more videos coming your way. And for even more content, check out CuriosityStream now with Nebula. Nebula is a streaming video service I started with my education creator friends like Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Vanessa Hill, Sof's Notes, Polymatter, and many, many more. It's a place where none of us have to worry about demonetization or the tyranny of click-through rates or watch time or the algorithm or ads. And you can find all of my videos there completely ad-free, including Apple Talk, the new podcast I'm hosting with Georgia Dow, where technology meets psychology and we talk about how all of these companies are affecting our culture and our lives. And every episode, every episode has a bonus topic available exclusively on Nebula. So what does it all have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, they're the go-to source for the best documentaries on the internet, and they love educational content and creators. And we worked out this deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, not only do you get CuriosityStream, but you also get a Nebula subscription for free. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% all of their annual plans. And yeah, 26% is just the best deal you'll find anywhere. So click the link in the description or go to CuriosityStream.com slash Renee Ritchie. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly for just $14.79 per year. Just go to the link in the description or go to CuriosityStream.com slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. For a ton more on everything Apple is announcing today, check out the playlist above. I'm gonna go through every spec, every feature, every pro and every con and more. Just click the link in the playlist and see you next video.